All right, let's look at our review for the quiz on sections 3-6 to 3-8. First, remember that like in number one, when it says find the instantaneous rate of change, and in number two, it says find f prime x, and number three, it says find dy dx, and number five, it says find the slope of the tangent line at this point. Like all of those are the same thing. It's the exact same process, it's just different names for the same thing. So instantaneous rate of change, instantaneous velocity, um, slope of the tangent line, derivative, f prime x, dy dx. So for number one, when we want to find the derivative, we're going to need to use chain rule. And so anytime you have a quantity raised to a power, you're not going to be able to just use like a power rule or a quotient rule or anything like that because of this quantity. So the first thing I want to do is see if there's any way to simplify that. So if I move this up to the numerator using a negative exponent, then I can use power rule with chain rule. All right, so anything to the negative three is going to be negative three, that thing to the negative four. That's the derivative of my outside function. Then I need to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of x squared plus x would be 2x plus 1. Um, and then just obvious simplifications, we're going to take the negative 3 times the 2x plus 1 and get negative 6x plus 3. You could leave this x squared plus x to the negative 4, or you could move it back down to the denominator to the positive 4. All right, then for number two, same thing. I can't take the cube root of a quantity, so I want to rewrite this in um, using an exponent. So remember that when you have a quantity, um, that your numerator is going to be your exponent, and your denominator is going to be your index. So this 2x squared minus x was being raised to the first power, and it was the cube root of that. So that's how we get the 1 third. And now we can use power rule again. So anything to the 1 third, doesn't matter what it is, anything to the 1 third is going to be 1 third that thing to the negative 2 thirds, because I'm going to do 1 third minus 1, negative 2 thirds. All right, so again, anything to the 1 third would be 1 third that thing to the negative 2 thirds. That's the derivative of the outside. Then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 2x squared is 4x, and the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So um, I could combine the 1 third with the 4x minus 1. Um, if you wanted to move this back down to a denominator, put it back under a radical, you could, or you could leave it like this. All right, then for the next one, uh, if I want to take the derivative of the cosecant of a quantity, the derivative of cosecant anything is negative cosecant cotangent of that thing. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that thing. All right, so the derivative of 2x squared, our quantity, would be 4x. So again, the derivative of cosecant anything is going to be negative cosecant cotangent of that thing. So there's that thing. And that's the derivative of the outside right there. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of 2x squared, which is 4x. That's the derivative of the inside. All right, then for number four, we're doing implicit differentiation. So remember, for implicit differentiation, you're going to take the derivative like normal. But if you take the derivative of y, you're going to leave a dy dx in there. All right, so if I take the derivative of x squared, that's 2x, that's in terms of x, so no problem. If I take the derivative of y cubed, that's 3y squared, but since that's not in terms of x, I have to leave a dy dx in there. So again, remember we said if you take the derivative of y, take the derivative like normal, but then leave a dy dx in there. All right, and then over here, derivative of 5y would be 5, and we took the derivative of y, so we're going to leave a dy dx in there. All right, now we want to get everything that's got a dy dx in it on the left-hand side. So this guy's going to stay, and this guy's going to need to subtract over. Anything that doesn't have a dy dx in it, I want to get on the other side. So this guy is going to subtract over. So now everything on the left has a dy dx in it so that I can take that out as a common factor. 
So if I take out dy dx, literally put your finger over this and put your finger over this, and what you have left is 3y squared minus 5. That's my other factor. So to get dy dx by itself, just divide by that other factor, 3y squared minus 5, and I'll have negative 2x over 3y squared minus 5. That would be my derivative. All right, so then for number 5, it says find the slope of the tangent line at the point 2, 1. All right, so if I want to find the slope of the tangent line, again, that's derivative. So basically, I'm looking for the derivative at 2, 1. So we just found our derivative a second ago to be this. So then let's put 2 in for x and 1 in for y. So 2 in for x, 1 in for y, and that gives us a positive 2 for the slope of our tangent line. If they had wanted us to create the equation of the tangent line, we could have done that too, but they just asked for the slope. All right, here's another implicit differentiation. So first off, I'm going to rewrite square root of x as x to the 1 half. So if this is x to the 1 half, then the derivative of that would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Then this is a product. So I'm going to have to do first times derivative of second plus second times derivative of first. All right, so first times derivative of second, the derivative of y is 1. And when you take the derivative of y, you leave a dy dx in there. So first times derivative of second plus second times derivative of first. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. Then over here on the other side, the derivative of 3 is 0, and the derivative of negative y squared is negative 2y, and since we took the derivative of y, we have to leave a dy dx in there. Okay, so anything that has a dy dx in it, I'm getting on the left-hand side. So this guy right here needs to stay on the left, and this guy right here needs to move to the left. So let's add it over to the other side. Then everything else needs to go to the right. So I'm going to take the 1 half x to the negative 1 half and subtract it over to the other side. And then I'm going to take the 2xy and subtract it to the other side. Okay, so since everything over here has a dy dx in it, I can take that out as a common factor. If you put your finger over this dy dx and this dy dx, you can see your other factor is x squared plus 2y. All right, so to get dy dx by itself, we're going to divide both sides by that other factor, divide both sides by the x squared plus 2y, and this would be our final answer. So you can see we've just rewritten it down here. All right, then for number 7, it says if g of x is the inverse of f of x, find the derivative of the inverse at 2. All right, and so here's our f of x. And here is our formula for finding the derivative of the inverse at 2. So again, g is the inverse. We want to find the derivative of it at 2. So that's going to be 1 over the derivative of the original function of g of 2. All right, so let's start on the inside. We need to find g of 2. So here's what that means. If I'm trying to find g of 2 on the inverse, I'm saying that would be the point 2 something on the inverse. Since x and y switch places, then that would have been the point something 2 on the original. So let's say that um, this was 7, okay? If this is the point 2, 7, then this is the point 7, 2, right? So in order to figure out what this value is, because it'll be the same for both of them, I just need to set my function equal to 2. So let's take our original function and set it equal to 2. That's a quadratic we can solve. So let's subtract 2 from both sides to get our quadratic equal to 0. And then we could factor it, set each factor equal to 0, and we'll get 7 and negative 1. Now, if you'll notice in that problem, it said that x had to be greater than or equal to 0. So it can't be negative 1. It has to be 7. So if this is the point 7, 2, then this is the point 2, 7. So that means that g of 2 is equal to 7. All right, so if g of 2 is equal to 7, now we have the derivative of the original function with 7 plugged into it. So we'll come over here, take the derivative of our original function. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of negative 6x is negative 6. And then let's plug 7 into that. All right, so if we put 7 in the place of x, then we would have 2 times 7 is 14 minus 6 is 8. And so that's going to give us 1 8. So again, that would be 
the derivative of the inverse at a point. We never found the inverse. We never took the derivative of it. Um, that formula does all that for us. All right, then for number eight, the derivative of an inverse trig. Now, if you notice at the bottom of your sheet, I told you that I will give you the formulas for the derivatives of the inverse trigs only. So anything else you have to know, but for this problem, this would be sitting here beside it. You don't have to know that. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative, and I have a quantity here, so I'm going to have to use chain rule. Okay, so over here, the derivative of inverse tangent anything is 1 over 1 plus that thing squared. 1 over 1 plus that thing squared. Then we need to multiply by the derivative of that thing. So that thing was x to the fourth. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x to the third. So here's the derivative of the outside. Here's the derivative of the inside. All right. If it makes it easier for you to use that substitution, then you can say, okay, this is u. So there it is again. There's u right there. And then I just need the derivative of u right here. Okay, so x to the fourth squared, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. So that would be x to the eighth. And so 1 times 4x cubed gives us 4x cubed in the numerator. 